Hello, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Teresa, and I'm with Open Food Network. And this is a little webinar about tagging and tag rules. This is the first of a two part webinar series on tagging, and this is the introductory one. So, tagging part one. In the chat, I've put uh, the link to the user guide tag and tag rules page. Uh, you can follow along if you like or refer to that later. Tagging is a way that we can customize shopping experience for people and it solves a lot of the unusual kinds of situations that community food enterprises have when they're selling um, in their many different ways to different kinds of customers. So tagging always happens between something and a customer, making it possible for certain customers to um, see or not see certain things. For example, there are four types of tagging. You can make particular variants or products visible or invisible for customers, like in a wholesale situation where wholesalers need to see different products or different prices, for example. We'll do that in video two. You can make certain shipping methods visible or invisible. So for example, if um, you have two delivery routes, perhaps, and you want um, you don't want people to self-select into them, but you want to assign your customers. You can make it so that only certain customers see certain delivery options. Or if delivery is going to be free for some customers and not free for other customers, um, you can tag to do that. And we're going to do that in video two. And you can make certain payment methods visible. A common use of this is if you have a public shop, but you also have some known and custom and, and trusted customers, you can make it so that certain customers are able to run a tab, for example, or pay by check, for example, but other customers require upfront payment by credit card. We'll also do that in video two. But today we're going to do the, the, the making an order cycle visible or invisible. So when you see order cycle, think store. How can I make it so that only certain people see my store? In my opinion, well, this is my favorite tag. I think you can do a lot with this tag. And um, today what we're going to do is we're going to tag particular on order cycles. And I have a little demo set up to do that. So let's do this. Here are the use cases. We'll get to these in webinar two, tagging heaven. But the use case for today is I want to tag um, members for a particular shop. I have a, a CSA shop and so that means buyers buy um, a membership, uh, a share, and from then forward two things have already bought it, but second they get a discount because now they're a member. This would be the same process if you had a wholesale shop and you had discounted prices different from your retail shop um, in that store. So that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> so here's my profile. Um, I'm logged in as the CSA manager. And tagging requires uh, three different steps. First of all, you have to identify the customer group that you want to tag to. Then you want to identify the um, tag rules. In other words, what you want the people in that customer group uh, to experience differently. And then you want to make sure you follow that through uh, in the order cycle page or the delivery page or whatever. So I like to start with my customer group. And I can do these in any, in any order, really. So this is just a first jump customers. Some of these people are my customers who um, buy from me regularly, and others are customers who um, are my members. And I can show you this if I just go to my store for a minute. Let's just going to my store. There I am. You'll see here that there are two shops here. One shop, pick up Friday at the farm, that's for the public. And you'll notice that I'm selling CSA shares in this shop. 
The other, my members only shop, is for my members only. They're both open at the same time. They're both open during the same hours. Um, but here, I'm no longer selling CSA shares because those customers uh, already have CSA shares. I don't want to buy them again. It's like if you put a membership item in a store, you don't want people to buy it twice. The other thing I'll point out to you is, we'll just use carrots, one pound bag is 450 for members. And if you noticed in the public shop, uh, one pound bag of carrots was $5. So there's a discount for my members. So I could not do tagging and just leave it like this because all this is is two different order cycles set up. Um, the problem is sometimes you don't want one group to see the other group. You might not want your public group to see um, what's happening in the members group. Uh, now in this case it probably doesn't matter because it's actually an interesting thing for, for public to see that. But if you had a wholesale or retail shop, you might not want your retail clients to see your wholesale shop. So I'm going to tag it so that when one of my members comes to this page, right, they see the members only shop. And when a member of the public comes to this page, someone who is not my members, they see pick up at Friday shop. So I start by going to my customers list. And which of these people, so anytime someone buys in your shop, they get added to this list, or you can add new customers. Um, which of these people are my members? Well, let's say this person is a member. And so I'm going to put members because I want them tagged to my members list. Um, and you'll notice right away when I hit return, I've got white on blue. Um, that's what you're kind of looking for. It tells you that there's not an error. You, you can kind of gain if you've made a mistake, if it, if it doesn't show up like that. So I'm going to save that. So I've got a member tagged. And I'm just going to write down so I remember the mail address so that I can show you that later. Okay, so I've done the first of the three things. I've put the, the people, the customers, into the group they need to be put into. So the next thing I need to do is at my dashboard. In my profile. Right down here, tag rules. I'm going to go right down here. And it says I have no tag rules yet. So by default, if you click here, you can read by default rules. These rules allow you to hide items so that they're not visible. So the basic premise is you're first hiding things from everybody, and then you're deciding who's going to see it, right? So I'm going to add a new default rule. So you get the four options of the things you're going to establish rules about, variance, shipping methods, payment methods, and order cycles, which is basically shop fronts. So I'm choosing to add a rule about my shop front. And then it asks me for order cycles tagged. In other words, for the shop fronts tagged, what? Well, in this example, I'm going to call it members only shop. I add a rule. Oh, sorry, I don't add a rule. I had a tag. So. Okay, so for order cycles tag, members only shop, they are not visible. So right now, that members only shop does not show up. But for customers tagged, and what did I call my customer? It's members. And what's going to happen for members? I'm going to add a rule. And it's the shop front, same thing. The order cycles tag members only shop are visible. So then you take a step back and you read it, maybe with a cup of coffee. Order cycles tagged members only shop are not visible. But for customers tagged members, the order cycles tagged members only shop are visible. And that's always your check. Read through the whole tag. Is that what you want to accomplish? I, I could have put members here too and, not, and made that more simple. But if I tag the customer group with a different tag than the shop, then that gives me the potential that I'm going to need in part two 
to have other specific things happen for these members too. So you'll see that when we get to part two. This gives you a little bit more flexibility. If, if I was only ever going to do one tag for members, I could just call all these things the same thing. And I'll show you that in two as well. So just play with it and then read it. Order cycles tag the members only shop are not visible. But for customers who are tagged as members, then the order cycles members only shop are going to be visible. So we have tagged our customers. We have set up a rule, but we have so far not created a tag on the order cycle. So this wouldn't, wouldn't work yet. We have to do those three things. Tag the customer, set up the rule, and now whatever is here, we have to do that tagging. So I have to tag order cycles as members only shop. So where do you think I do that? Well, with order cycles. So here's my two order cycles. Remember you saw these two shops? One was just a public shop, and one was a members only shop. And I'm gonna tag the members only shop. So I'm gonna open that order cycle. And if you come to do this and your order cycle doesn't look like this, in other words, it doesn't have these three steps, that is because you have not set up as a hub enterprise package. So in order to tag, in, it's going to be in the outgoing section, you want a, a, a package set up this way for it to look like this. So you've done nothing wrong if your page doesn't look like this. It's just that you need to change your package. Um, so here's my order cycle. I'll just point out this. I've put a 10% discount fee. That's just a negative fee um, for members. That's why that fee difference showed up. Um, that's not to do with tagging. Right? Right? The tagging is what's going to make this whole shop invisible to the general public. The other thing I did, just so that you see how that I accomplished this, you'll see under incoming products in my product list, everything is selected except for the shares. I deselected the shares because I don't want them showing up to the members because they've already bought shares. So if you had like a buy membership item, you would deselect it there. Um, you don't have to do this every week because you can just clone an order cycle. And then this just automatically happens. And whatever tagging you do will remain consistent when you clone an order cycle. So you're really only ever setting this up once and then you're cloning order cycles. It's in the outgoing products that you put in your tags. So, and this phrase here is what's gonna show up in that uh, shop selection. So they know which shop to select. So I've called it members only. And now I'm gonna put the tag. And what was it? Members only shop. I have, the word has to be the same. And I know that it's the same because it turned out white on blue and I didn't, I didn't get any uh, graying out of the, the phrase or anything. Okay, so I'm gonna save that tag. And then we do the test and, and this is something Times where I get embarrassed because I did something wrong and we'll have to investigate what I did wrong. Um, it's pretty typical that you, you need a couple tries to get it right because until you've done it a whole lot, it's easy to make a little mistake. And don't worry, just, just check it out. Okay, so let me check the shop. Oh, I forget, am I logged in here? No, I guess I'm not, okay. So um, we're checking the shop. Let's see what's happened. I see Friday or only pickup, and I get no other drop down here. Not coming up. So I am now logged in as a member of the general public, and this is the shop I'm going to see. And I'm not going to see any other shop. And I would put here, you know, the pickup date or whatever. So how do I know that the tag worked? Well, you need to log in as a person who's tagged. So usually, if you're a hub manager, you will also tag your login, just so that you can check it out and see the tag, right? So I'm just going to um, log out so I can show you how you would do this. Okay. 
So now I'm logging in, and this is the login I put that tag on. So this would be your uh, user login, perhaps. It's good to do that. And I'm going to show you the shop. Go back to CSA Farm. And now, there we go. Now I can see the members only shop. This changing from red to blue uh, is a little odd thing we have happening right now. It's going to be fixed. Um, normally it will just be blue. So now I can see the members only shop. And you can see that in this home banner or, you know, some people are calling this like announcements or something like that. Um, this explains to people, if you're a CSA member, you can log in now, upper right, and see your members only shop. If you're not a CSA member, you can still buy shares and once you do, we'll make you a member. Another thing to notice is this tag doesn't eliminate me seeing this. I see both shops. That's why I have a information telling me, and it would be the same if you tagged for a wholesale shop. Your wholesalers would see the wholesale shop and the retail shop. Your public shop, your retail shop, would only see the public shop. They wouldn't see the wholesale numbers. And we, we do this because tagging is to a customer. It, it has to be a known person. So there's no way I could tag this pick up Friday at the farm shop because I don't know who the buyer is going to be. I'm trying to get new buyers. I've got this shop out there on social media. So until I have a customer, I can't tag. So I really take a public shop. And I think that's where we will end. And we'll continue in um, webinar number two. So remember, there are three steps. Which, which, which customers are in which group? Put the group together. Create the rule, what you want to happen. And follow through with all the rule and tag the order cycle the shipping method, the payment method, or the variance. And in number two, we'll look at those uh, other options.